Hello everyone and welcome back to Whiskey Wednesday. The theory or the idea behind this episode and possibly a long running series throughout the year is how the mighty have fallen. Now today, as you can see from the thumbnail while you clicked on this video, we are talking about Lagavulin 16. Uh, this is a freshly bought bottle, freshly popped bottle, and the whiskey has been sat in the glass for about 20 minutes. Um, but I think there needs to be, in a very whiskey in the six and sipper social club way, there needs to be a little bit of a rant at this point. Now, 10 years ago, when I was getting into whiskey, this bottle was one of the most widely available, widely talked about bottles ever, up until about two months ago when it reappeared on the UK market and it had been absent for about a year which is odd because it isn't a small distillery and it is owned by the largest drinks corporation in the world but when I first got into whiskey it was a case of have you tried like a villain you need to try like a villain have you tried like a villain wasn't a huge fan of peated whiskey at the start of my whiskey career as indeed many people aren't but I got there eventually uh, mainly lured into it by things like Kalila and then ending up with Laphroaig and like a Vulnin and Port Charlotte, etc. Et um, it was a whiskey that had a lot of talk about it. And if you think about when people were talking about this product, no matter who they were, it is a 16 year old minimum heavily peated whiskey with what is essentially a four year sherry finish at 43%. And this used to be on offer in a supermarket for about 45 pounds at its lowest. Um, but I think retail of like, 50, maybe a bit below. And I thought that was absurd, even at the time. And when I first started selling whiskey for a living, it was like 16 years for like sub 50 quid. And at the time you had things like Glenlivet and Adora 16. Uh, I'm trying to think of other sort of old peated whiskies. Kalila 18 was like low 70s, sometimes high 80s, depending where you bought it from. Uh, you know, Bonnerhaven 18 was like 90 pounds, not as peaty, not, not peaty at all. And I was like, that's crazy. And I remember talking to colleagues and like people at whiskey festivals, like, do you not think it's absurd that at the time, what was, what was like the main product, because 10 years ago, there was Lagavulin 16, there was Lagavulin Distillers Edition, which is essentially this whiskey with an PX finish, so it's like a triple maturation. Like a Vullin, even though it only says double maturation on the front of it. Um, and there was the Like a Vullin 12, which is brought out once a year. That was it. That was the core range for Like a Vullin. And if you think in the last 10 years, they did the 8-year-old. They've done a 10-year-old, which was just available in travel retail. They've done the 11-year-old Nick Offerman edition. There was a 9-year-old Game of Thrones release. Um, numerous older whiskies for Fashiel and Diageo special releases, etc, etc. Personally, I think as soon as celebrities get involved with a whiskey brand, you should kind of walk away. And I think that's been somewhat of a tell for lack of villain recently, especially in the last two years. Um, outside of glassware shortages for the industry and cardboard shortages for the industry, I don't think there's any reasoning at all for the intense price hikes that have taken place on this product. Was it being undersold massively by supermarkets for years? Absolutely. And I think Diageo should be held accountable for that because whiskey drinkers got a bargain. 16 year old heavily peated whiskey for below 50 quid. Absolutely, how many bottles can I buy? Supermarkets were buying thousands, if not tens of thousands of cases of this and they weren't particularly asked, sorry for my language, if they made a loss on it because a supermarket can afford to make a loss on whiskey because you know, you're, they're gaining margin in the other areas in which you're buying products. And now, Last year in particular, Diageo, so in 2021, Diageo, oh sorry, 2022, Diageo had two separate price increases. I picked this up for £80. I've seen this as high as like £130 a bottle. And yes, that is a massive price increase from 50 quid. But if this would have been appropriately priced and not sold in supermarkets, would it be as gross an increase as it is today? Yeah, it probably would actually. Um, I just like to hold supermarkets accountable because I personally think they kind of ruined whiskey for a lot of people. I think supermarkets are to blame for that a little bit. As are large drink conglomerates in itself. And it seems like at Diageo they just spun a wheel and went, this is worth this much now. But it still sells. I bought it. Purely for the sake of this video. Um, and to let some friends try it because they've never tried Lagavulin. But at the same time, 80 quid. 
I will get to nosing and smelling this at some point. Just get this ran out of me first. I feel like it's been sort of brewing up in me for days since I bought this bottle. Diageo, like the, the prices are just insane. I reviewed the Kleinleash 12 and Lagavulin 12 special releases a couple of weeks ago. Well, what was last year now? 135 for the Lagavulin, 175 for the Kleinleash, that's pounds. 80 pounds for this. And if you put the core release, or like the most famous release from every Isla distillery next to each other, Ardbeg 10, which did suffer from the same supermarket fate, you can still pick up again for like, you can still currently pick that up for about 50 quid, which I don't think is too absurd for a 46% natural everything whiskey. Um, but a Harvin 12, slight price increase, unpeated, but still you can pick it up for definitely below 50 pounds a bowl. Port Charlotte 10, I've seen it as low as 40 quid. It's on a sale, yeah, but you can get it as low as 40. RRP's like, what, 50? Something like that. Um, I'm running out of distilleries. Bowmore, let's not talk about Bowmore, because that core release range is, it's a brutal word, but it's simply pathetic, given how good Bowmore can actually be. That core range is just nothing. Black of All in 16, we've just talked about. Uh, Kill Homan. Fantastic. No age statements yet. I don't particularly have an issue with that. 46% mostly bourbon maturation in the Mackey Bay, mostly sherry maturation in the, the Seneg, natural colour and natural filtered, both about £50 a bottle. Great. Um, I'm running out of distilleries in Isla. Elixir don't have one out yet. Ardnaho don't have one out yet. Port Ellen is yet to release one. Uh, Kalila. Kalila's gone through a bit of a weird one. Kalila Distillers Edition now doesn't have a vintage on it. Another Diageo on product. Haven't seen the 12 anywhere for a while. Um, but again, that's like, I think last time I saw that on a shelf, it was like 47 pounds. Not bad, not bad really. Um, I think that's all of them. Pretty sure that's all of them. I'm definitely gonna get corrected below, but I'm pretty sure that's all of them. Um, and then we've got this, and you know, it's, it's just sad. And as the title of this video is, says, it's just fallen. It really has. But that's like a six minute rant. I've not even drank it yet. So, you know, post below. I reply to every comment. Or I try to, but most of the comments do get replied to. So do feedback down below. And we should try this. Now this is, it's not natural colour. And it is chill filtered. And even those two points, people were still like, like whiskey enthusiasts back in the day was like, it's a great whiskey because for below 50 quid, I suppose that's kind of an accepted thing. These days, if it's below 50 quid in natural colour and natural filter, then it's just added bonuses. Let's smell, let's taste. Everyone always says like a Valin, smells like Lapsong Sushong tea. I've never tried that, so I don't really know what that smells like. There is a smokiness to it still. Uh, this is not, I think I last tried Lagavulin in a bar in November. And I will say that it doesn't smell as smoky as it used to be, which is unusual because we know it's essentially petered to the same PPM. There's quite a lot of sweetness to it. With some minerality as well, and I, I typically use that word. Sometimes in association with Laphroaig, but I've used it a lot to describe whiskies like Elsa Bay. Uh, some Springbank stuff, some Long Row stuff as well, very minerally. But not like over the top peat. But there is, for me, the classic smell of what Lagavulin 16, excuse me, what Lagavulin 16 was. Which was that seashore-y bonfire thing. Very cold, late night bonfire whether it's dying or still sort of in full roar you with your friends you're drinking whiskey you keep it warm this does still remind me of that a kind of wet sand wet rock fiery ashy sort of profile but with loads of sweetness like there's a huge hint of raisin on this um there is a code on the back of this but i can't really dissect the diageo bottling codes but there is a very very pungent Sherry note to this. It is those raisins and those cinder toffees. 
quite classic sherry, but it doesn't, for me anyway, it doesn't smell as smoky as it used to be. I mean, it does still taste like Lago Villain, but it's still sad. Um, first arrival, there's quite a lot of spice. That's not the first whiskey I've had today. Um, really kind of pleasant, fizzy barrel spice. Slightly oaky, not really oaky, but slightly oaky. And then again, loads of sherry, very rich, almost like abalower. Glendronic sherry notes, raisin, orange, a little bit of milk chocolate. The smoke begins to funnel through. And I can still taste it now. And again, it's 43%. It is non chill filtered. But f sorry, it's 43%. It is chill filtered and it's coloured as well. Hell of a finish for something that's only 43%. But we do have to remember it's a minimum of 16 years old, which was the key selling point for this whiskey, and indeed the flavour you get out of it. More minerally notes, kind of slightly sharp, olivey, briny notes as well. There's still that ashy bonfire thing, you know, like when you sat near a fire and the wind kind of blows into you and your eyes start to sting, but you can taste it. Cigar smoke. For all of the rant that came before this, it is still, despite its, you know, filtering, etc., still a hell of a product. It really is. It tastes like full fat whiskey. Because I think if you gave this someone, I don't think you'd be able to tell that it was chill filtered. Because it's still quite oily, I can still get all that kind of viscousness from it. The flavour is still lingering as I'm talking to you. So maybe that's why it was also very popular, because it is chill filtered, but it doesn't taste like it is. I will say on the second sip, even initially as it hit my palate, there was this very large spike, like an unexpected sharp flavour, um, which almost came across as like quite youthful, quite kind of vegetally. Um, if any of us, if any of you watching this are from New Make Spirit, you know what I'm talking about. Huge spike of that, which I can still taste now, despite the fact we know there's nothing younger than 16 in it. Next bourbon cask, refilled several times. Um, that could be the thing at key for that. Score-wise though, because this is becoming quite a long video, it still tastes good. Which I hate to admit, because I want to dislike it. I want to like turn on it, sort of. Um, I'm still going to give it an 8, because if someone bought me a bottle of that, I'd be quite grateful. If someone bought me a glass of it at a bar, I'd be pretty grateful. And it still does taste like Lagavulin, despite this spiky, youthful note in it. The cigar smoke, the brininess, the mineraliness, the ashy bonfireness, whatever Lapsong Souchong tastes like. Still a great whiskey. Should you buy it? No. You shouldn't buy it. I think large, comp large whiskey companies, Diageo, Pernod Ricard as well, got a separate rant about them, should start to be held accountable for bad pricing, fashionable price increases. This is one of them, because two price increases in a year at retail, and this thing isn't in bars anymore, it's not in on trade, it's definitely not in supermarkets. <laughs> Um, that's been replaced with the eight-year-old and, you know, same with our big ten, the five-year-olds now and now. Because they saw this coming. 
but they should have seen it coming a long time ago. So if you have 80 pounds in your pocket, screw it, call it 100. If you've got 100 pounds and you want to buy peated whiskey, the list is literally too long to put in this video. There is Ardbeg 10, Ardbeg Oogadal, a little bit more expensive, but there's Ardbeg Cory Bracken. I didn't like the Ardbeg five-year-old, but some of you might. Don't buy the special releases, they're absolutely pointless. Um, anything from Port Charlotte, because, well, Brocladdy, Port Charlotte 10, probably the most consistent Isla single malt, I would say currently right now, incredibly consistent, along with Kilhome and Mackie Bay and Kilhome and Senaig, which I've had like three bottles of and it was incredible every time I opened it, despite the colour difference on the batches. Kalila 12, still a pretty good whiskey, pretty much half the price of that. Finish isn't as long, but it's lovely, it's sweet, creamy smoke. Bunnerhaven had some price increases, but they've got a bottle called the Tokiadar, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a non-age statement with a grey uh, with a grey label. It's about £45. Wonderful. Tastes like baby Lagavulin for 30 quid less. Uh, Bowmore, we've talked about Bowmore, throw them out the window until they start to actively change things. Um, Lagavulin 8 is actually quite good. You should probably buy Lagavulin 8 rather than the 16. If you were to buy Lagavulin, that was. Um, you know, and that's just peated whiskey on Isla. That's not Macri Moore from Aaron, or what will eventually come out of the Lag distillery at the southern part of Aaron now. Um, Elsa Bay in the Lowlands, a fantastic Lowland peated whiskey. Um, I'm running out of stuff now because my brain's getting a bit hot, I'm getting a bit ranty again. But there's loads of options, and if you've got like a hundred pounds, you could buy a bottle of Port Charlotte and a bottle of Art Big Ten. And probably still get some change. And I think you'd enjoy them more, too. So yeah, the whiskey gets an 8. Objectively, purely based on flavour, it's an 8 out of 10. Subjectively, totally different argument. And you should just... You are the consumer. You have the power. You need to start holding these companies accountable. If you know if, if you've got a mate who buys Lagavulin like sixteen because it's the only whiskey they like, fine. Maybe wait for a sale or something. But you know, as soon as the celebrity thing happened, and don't get me wrong, I like um, Nick Offerman. I think he's a very good actor. Um, I don't think Parks and Rec was that funny, but he's a very good actor. That association and all that stuff. Those whiskies are okay at most. Like the Guinness Cask Edition was fine. I've not tried the new one. Um, but as soon as I saw that happening, I was like, Lagavulin 16 is about to get more expensive. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's all from me. Sorry for this like 20 minute video. Um, uh, hopefully I'll get some good feedback, but I look forward to seeing you again. Uh, if any of you would like to know what my rant about Perno Ricard is, let me know below and I'll do a video on Perno Ricard because they deserve a little bit of a, a bollocking as well. But yes, final note is, you've got the power. And I look at myself when I do that because the video screen, it looks very egotistical to me right now, but you do have the power. And if you leave this on shelves, the price might not go down, but Diageo stock prices might. And that's when things get a little bit naughty for Diageo. Just bear that in mind. But yes, I'll see you all next week. Cheers.